Hello there, I'm Eric. Welcome to The Shed. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at generative AI inside Adobe Express, specifically as part of the update to mid-2023. Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to be creating a couple of stories, maybe something for social media using generative AI. You can see a couple of examples there. Let's jump into Adobe Express and see what's what. All right, straight off the bat, some things may look different to the version that you're using. I'm using a beta version and things may change between now and when you're watching this video. But essentially, there's a few ways to get to generative AI. The first, as you might be able to see here, is on this tab here along the menu, generative AI. We can just click on that and in we go and we can use some of the prompts on the left hand side. I'm going to go back to the menu here. I can also get to it in the quick actions. Now for me right now, it's one and two, but it may, like I say, be different for you. And that will take us to somewhere like this. Now the problem for me, and it may not be by the time it gets to you, is that it's always going to generate as a square. And in this instance, that's not what I want. So I'm going to go home again. So what I'm actually going to do is come down to Instagram story and click create from scratch. And there we go. Okay, so now I can add to this using text to image. This is the generative AI. So if I click on that, I've now got a choice of what size I want to use. And I'm going to choose portrait. Okay, now it's really small, so I can make it bigger if I want. I can do this a bit later. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to make it nice and big right now. Let's see if I can't get that in the middle. There we go. All right. So what do I want? Well, we're working during this series on Adobe Express for a coffee shop called Snot Real. So let's make up something for Snot Real. And in this case, maybe I'm thinking along the lines of an alien having a coffee inside a coffee shop. So that's exactly what I'm going to put. An alien drinking coffee in a coffee shop. Now, all I have to do now is click generate and off it goes. And it's going to generate an image that matches my prompt. So here we go. Let's have a look. I'm not going to cut out any time here just so you can see how quick it is. All right. So I've got this. I've got this one. I've got this one. And I've got this one. All right. Maybe looking a bit harsh. So, of course, you already know what the finished version is. I've got no idea. So uh, bear with me here. I'm going to take you through the process. If we knew the final prompt, we could just whack that in and, and off we go. But I'm going to work through the process here. OK, so I don't think an alien is going to work very well. So let's try a monster. I just hit return that time. It's going to wipe those ones out and start afresh. Up they come. All right, looking uh, perhaps a little less unfriendly, I was going to say there. But by its very nature, they are very unfriendly. OK and monster let's say a monster let's say a cute monster drinking coffee in a coffee shop so now we're starting to work towards something a little bit more welcoming okay uh, that's nice enough we should have some more here yeah there we go all right <laughs> looking a little bit more friendly uh, let's say a cute happy monster now cute monsters always look better if they're wearing a hat so we'll say wearing a rain hat there we go all right wearing a rain hat drinking coffee in a coffee shop and i'm going to hit enter and off it goes again so right now all i'm doing is just finding the general look that i want for this there's nothing here that i'm going to probably land on as my finished version but we're starting to make progress they certainly look a lot happier, a lot more welcoming. Certainly this one would be sort of the way that I would go. Now you can see underneath these four, I've got load more, which I'm going to click on. And you may have noticed in other Adobe Generative AI apps that you get four and that's it. But here we can keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. I think in Photoshop, you can keep piling them on. But uh, in Firefly, as of this recording, you only get four. Okay, so, uh, yeah, looking good. Nice. 
Now underneath our prompt here, you can see that we've got our content type. Uh, here I can choose whether I want it to be photo, graphic, art or none. Uh, I'm going to go for photo here. I want it to be reasonably photo realistic and you can see straight away it goes away and starts generating more images for me. Okay, nice. I like this. I like the fact that it's also putting rain outside because uh, he's wearing a rain hat, which I kind of like. That's sweet. We're certainly getting somewhere near where we want to be. Underneath that, we've got various styles. Now this one isn't going to need much style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the new board here. So I'm going to click on that. And here I'm going to choose a clockwork owl made from cogs and click generate. And what we can do here is we can start messing around with different styles. Again, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger so we can see it. And here you're going to see some very different kind of images, all very nice. But this would work in slightly different ways. So I'm going to make it digital art, perhaps. And then in movements, I can choose steampunk, which would work very well for this. In themes, I'm not going to go through all of these. I'll leave that for you to play with. Uh, in this one, maybe a bit of concept art. I can choose as many or as little as I want from this. Techniques, I'm not going to worry too much about. Effects, well, uh, we could try one of those, but I'm not going to. Uh, materials, um, no, again, we're going to leave that. And concepts, I'm going to make it beautiful and then click generate. And all four of those that I've chosen there will be applied to this image. Now, this means that you can actually mix different styles, different themes, as much as you like. Things that perhaps you wouldn't have normally thought of to go together, you can put together. And you can see now that I've got a very different set of images here that work really, really nicely. I'm just going to pop that down there and go back to my other, I'm going to call it an artboard. Because what I want to do here is I want to add to my alien here. So when I go back onto this layer, you can see that text to image is there and it says new, meaning that it is new, but I've also got a new image there and I can start adding to this. So I don't want quite so many on this one, to be honest with you. What I'd like it to be is a product photo and the materials. Now, I'd quite like him to be made of yarn. So I'm going to do that and click generate because yarn is going to be a bit more warm, a bit more cuddly, a bit more friendly. Off it goes, does its stuff. So now I'm choosing to have it as a photograph I'm choosing a product photograph and I'm choosing to have it made of yarn and look at him. That really couldn't be any more perfect. I really think that I'm going to use this one here. Okay, I'm going to load more just in case there might be one better than that mine there. So let's have a look, see what we've got. And I quite like this one next to him, but let's have a look. Uh, cute, nice, <laughs> lovely. Good. All right. But I think he's going to be my final choice. Now, what I want to do here now is to add some text to this. And for this, I'm going to go back over to my owl and I'm going to go on to text. I'm going to add text. You can see that we have some effects here that you can just click on, go for. But I'm going to click add text and I'm going to type the word owl. And you'll see why in just a second. I'm just showing just how creative I can be. And now if I scroll down, you'll be able to see that I can now add text effects. Now it's a very similar thing to what we've just done with the image, but in this case, it's going to add an effect to the text. So how do we want the text? Well, let's do this in feathers. So we're going to put uh, long feathers. Now quite often a short prompt like that will bring up a warning saying this just isn't descriptive enough. But then it goes ahead and does it anyway. But uh, in this case, it's done it, so we're OK. And there we go. We've now got our owl, our word owl, written in feathers. Now, these feathers do protrude slightly from the outside of the text. And if I didn't want that, if I wanted it to stay inside the lines a bit more, I could use tight here and click generate. 
and if I wanted it to flow more outside of the text then I would choose loose. You can see here that it's very much wrapped up inside the text. I can choose loose here and choose generate once again and now the feather should protrude nicely just feathery from outside. You can see it certainly on the top of the W there. If I choose one of the other effects you can see that uh, we have slightly different amounts of wispiness as well. I quite like that. So with a short word like owl that is just three letters long and quite prominent within the image, these little wispy bits can stand out quite a lot. In my image, I'm going to use quite a lot of text. So I'm going to go into add text and I'm just going to bring that up to the top a little bit. And I'm going to type in taste the nectar of the bean gods, which is a phrase that we've been using for our Snot Real Company. So I want this to be on the poster. Obviously, I'm going to click on my favorite button, which is this one here, which makes it all nice and good. There we go. And we can draw that out. Now I'm going to add text effects to this. Here we go. And it's going to be coffee beans. If I just type coffee beans here, and off it goes. And again, I've got it on medium. While this is doing, you can see that there's some sample effects here. By all means, go ahead, click on those, see some examples. Here you can see that I can't really see the beans. Uh, it's very small. There's not much protrusion that I can see because it's all compacted down. Now I could change that because I could put large coffee beans and set it off again. And now it's going to make beans. No, I'm going to guess this. It's going to make it bigger. Uh, so now we have larger coffee beans and so I can see a bit more uh, that uh, they are coffee beans especially if I click on this one uh, yeah I can see it a little bit more but not quite as much as before so if it's something small and intricate like coffee beans and you've got a lot of them in there you're going to get mixed results depending on what you want of course for me though it just looks like dirt or something maybe I play too much Minecraft but that does look a bit like dirt from a distance. I could make it bigger, of course, but we're going to uh, lose our image, which I don't really want. So I'm going to ditch all of that. And instead, I'm going to put always a warm welcome. There we go. And let's make this up here. There we go. Good. And pop it in there. Now to make this stand out a little bit more we can add a shadow to this. It's not really going to work very well on this but a shape might do. So we can put a shape going right the way across. If I click on show more I can pop in this one. Let's go and change that. The shape fill is going to be black and I can reduce the opacity of that right down just so it doesn't extrude too much but we can see the text a little bit better. There we go. That's nice. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to bring our little uh, monster friend there in front of the text, not covering it completely, but we certainly want him in front. Here's a little trick and tip for you. So I'm going to go to the layers and I'm going to choose the bottom layer, which is our little monster. Now, this is going to work out wrong to start with, so bear with me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the background just so we can see what's happening. And you can see now that the monster and the coffee cup are isolated on its own layer there, which is kind of nice. Let's pop that back by unselecting that. But we can now duplicate this layer. So I'm going to duplicate that. You can see that he's now on the top. It's not in the middle, which is a bit frustrating, but we can pop him back in the middle and then we can put remove background and now it looks like part of him at least is in front of the text. I can always go back into the text and move that around should I wish. Now the great thing about this is that we can use this as part of a whole series of images. So remember we had different pages. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that and that. We don't need it. Or I can come up here and I can go to these pages here, view all pages, and I can just click on the three dots and choose delete. 
There we go. Now you may also see that if we go onto these three dots, we can duplicate. So I'm going to duplicate that and then go back into number two. I'm going to get rid of that front layer. And then in the back layer, what I can do is I can come down to my text to image and uh, there they are still. And so I can choose a different one. There he is. Look at that. Nice. So then again, let's duplicate the background image. Put him back in the middle and then remove the background. And there he is in front of that. Now I have two images for a whole series. Should I wish to use them on a campaign or something like that? Really quickly, really easy, because I've got essentially a template that I can keep using. Let's go up here and let's change the text here to uh, monster. Warm welcome. There we go. And then page one, I'm going to put a uh, smile green. And then on this one, we can go uh, uh, two hands. We've got two hands on the cup. I don't think the other one has. No. Uh, okay, so there we go. So it's got two hands on the mic. So I go to download and I choose all pages. PNG, best for images. I could also choose JPEG or PDF, should I wish, if they suit me better. But in this case, PNG. And I'm going to click download. Here we go. So it's going to put everything together for us. Now, not only is it going to put everything together, it's going to zip it together. There we are. So let's go and have a look and see what's going on here. So there's my monster warm welcome. Uh, I'm on a Mac, so I can just double click this to go and unzip it. And then inside of that, you can see that I've got two images here. Monster warm welcome to two hands and monster warm welcome one uh, sm smile green. So that's image one and image two as per they were labeled in our document. So now all I've got to do is upload those to my social media network or print them off if I want them as a poster. Who knows what I want to do? All right, it really is that easy to do a whole campaign. Now this is part of a whole series of videos about the Adobe Express update of mid 2023. There should be a little list somewhere wherever you're watching this. If you are using anything in the new Adobe Express and you'd like to share it with me, I would gratefully receive that. I love to see what people are doing. But for now, that's generative AI inside of Adobe Express. My name's Eric. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.